So in this video, let's talk about the fear of getting hit. Uh, a lot of people have this with their boxing. In boxing, you are going to get a hit. It's one of the, the few sports where uh, guaranteed you're gonna get punched in the face. Kickboxing, MMA, other striking sports, same deal. Getting punched in the face is not for everybody. Guaranteed it's gonna happen. And in fact, this is such a, a common issue or concern that I already wrote a blog post about this three years ago on my website after getting a number of emails about the topic. It was already uh, something that was a very prevalent topic back then. It probably always has been. And so uh, this video was long overdue. Just recently I got a message from somebody who said they've been boxing for two years and still they have a fear of getting hit and it holds me back, so what can I do about it? So it just goes to show you that this is quite uh, a common topic and a big concern. Now, I also have a fear of getting hit, and I think that everybody should have a certain degree of fear of getting hit, a healthy degree. If you don't have a fear of getting hit, I find people who I know who seem to be like that, they tend to be reckless. Now they may still be tough, they may still be good fighters, but they often get hit a lot and they don't work on other aspects of their boxing. They have this mindset of, uh, you know, take a shot to get a shot or take two to get one in. And I don't really think that's intelligent boxing. I don't really think that's good for you in the long term. It may work for you in the short term. It may be effective in certain cases where you need it. For example, uh, you know, it's the final round and you need a knockout. And so you have to go out there with that mentality. But in general, having a healthy fear of getting hit is what prevents you from getting hit. The problem is, is when you have a fear of getting hit and it freezes you, it holds you back, it causes you not to launch your offense, not to launch counters. So for example, if you were to throw one, two, three at me, I might cover, and then when you're done, I'm kind of hesitating as opposed to waiting for that chance, boom, and coming back. Because the best boxers, the best fighters, are able to use that split timing, either when a combo is finished or in between punches. Let's say you go one, two, three, I would go one, two, and I can counter before you throw your three because I'm not afraid. Or you go one, two, three, block, 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 and I counter right back because I blocked that shot with confidence and was able to get right back in there. So. Fear of getting hit is healthy in some respects, and we're gonna go over that, but uh, for a lot of people, it freezes them up because they don't take calculated risks. Uh, they don't take enough calculated risks. It freezes them. They don't do enough to win. So let's go over a couple situations where I think um, having a fear of getting hit is a good thing. Number one, if you are in unchartered territory, let's say you go to a new gym or you're sparring somebody new or you're new to boxing, you might want to play it safe until you build your comfort level, especially if let's say somebody's just trying to load up on you. You are better off sparring, uh, let's say you're a lighter person, you're better off sparring a heavyweight with control than a light heavyweight who's trying to take you out with a big shot. So. The fear in some cases is your friend, meaning that if you're getting, uh, if somebody's pounding on you, or if you were at a new gym and somebody's just trying to, to show you up and, and really lay the beats on you, or if uh, you, know, you don't have anybody in your corner watching you and telling you to fix things, you're gonna take a beating and you're not gonna learn. In some cases like this, it's okay to walk away from the sparring do your round and you feel, you know what, this is not what I want right now, uh, or this, this person is just trying to tee off on me, and get out of that sparring or get out of that gym uh, and find something that you're gonna build up to a little bit better. Now, in my opinion, the number one way to get over the fear of getting hit is to get hit less. Now, I know that almost sounds so obvious, but getting hit less requires a lot of other work. And so a lot of people don't realize how a fear of getting hit is intertwined with all their other boxing. You know that saying, fatigue makes cowards of us all. If you have better conditioning, 
if you have better skill, better defense, uh, a better jab, better footwork, all of that means you're going to get hit less. All of that means that you have the capacity to get hit less when you want, when you want to, when you want to implement uh, your skill and your fitness, you will be able to get hit less. When you're getting hit less, you have less to worry about. When you are getting hit less, you're not worried about getting hit because that you know you can avoid it. And when you are not worried about getting hit as much because you know you can avoid it, the fear of getting hit diminishes. When you're in the ring, there are generally two scenarios when getting hit is going to be the most devastating. And if you can prevent getting hit in these situations, you can prevent the most devastating of punches hitting you and therefore make getting hit not as much of a problem and in my opinion make the fear of getting hit not as much of a problem. Number one, probably the worst time to get hit is when you're coming in, stepping in with your combo, coming in and you get hit as you're coming in. And this is really what the problem is for a lot of people is they're afraid to pull the trigger, punching because when they go with their shots, that's when they're getting tagged. That's number one. Going in with punches, walking into a punch while you're open, going in. Number two, probably the next worst scenario to get hit is when somebody steps in and launches on you and you're standing still like a sitting duck, just a target. And whatever openings they find, you're right there like a heavy bag and boom, if there's an opening, they're gonna find it and you're gonna get hit hard. Usually if you're coming in and the opponent is punching, moving back, they may be effective punches, but they're not as devastating. Or if two of you are standing still on the inside, they may be effective punches, but they're not as devastating. Or if you're moving back and somebody's coming at you and hitting you, they're going to hit you, but it's not gonna be as flush, the impact is not gonna be as much, and so it's not as devastating. So let's talk about the first scenario, which is probably, probably the biggest issue, which is uh, getting hit while you're coming in. The more work you can do up front before you throw, before you launch your combo, the better chance you have of landing your shot without getting hit. Specific tactics. There are three things that are going to prevent you from getting hit before you come in with your combo. Number one, I always say, and I said this in my sparring videos, I think that everybody needs about four to five preset combos that they know going in. A lot of people, have them, they don't even know they have them. They like to go, you know, one, three, two, or they like to go two body, left uppercut. They have them, they don't even know they have them. But if you're always going in with the same stuff, then you're gonna get timed, you're gonna be more predictable. You need about four or five different combos so that you can start differently. When you start differently, the opponent doesn't know what's coming, they don't know when you're coming, they don't know where your head is going to be when you're coming in, and all these make it harder to time you, all these make it harder to hit you with that big shot, the devastating shot, which is usually what people are afraid of, the shot that nails you while you're coming in. Three things that you can do before you go with your preset combo that make it much harder to hit you. Number one, and again, some of these I, just, I go into detail in my instructional videos. If you want more on it, check those out. Number one, lateral motion. Moving side to side. If I was to get a dartboard, let's say a dartboard on a wall, and have it slowly move across, really slow, and you had to hit the bullseye, even just that little bit of movement is going to make it, it's going to make you think twice before you throw that dart. Just that little bit of movement is going to make it harder for you to hit the target. When you are moving sideways, just that little bit of movement alone, even if it's walking, like Hopkins, he's always moving, he's always walking. Hagler, Hagler never stopped with his feet, always always moving, always walking, always on his feet, always hopping and moving, lateral motion. When you are always moving, even if your head is just moving like this, you become a much harder target to hit, you become a much harder target to time, and it also makes it less predictable when you're coming in. 
lateral motion, and I discuss this in a ton of my free videos, do not stand still in front of your opponent, dead in your tracks, and then just go. You're gonna get timed. Number two, feints and fakes. You're moving lateral motion. You fake, you fake. A lot of people think of fakes as <clears throat> setups, and they can be. They think, oh, I'm gonna fake the jab, set him up with the right hand. If you are on your game, you use fakes to set up a lot of things. But fakes aren't necessarily such an aggressive tactic. They can just be used to make it harder for you to time coming in when you do go. Even if you don't land that shot or that fake that you set up, at least you didn't get time coming in. You went in, boom, you threw your shot, uh, you didn't get timed, the person covered, boom, you, you throw your punches, you may see an opening, you may not, and then you have time to get out. Feints and fakes. It can be a footwork step, a back step, head movement, hands, boom. Fakes really throw off the rhythm and the timing. You put fakes in with lateral motion and you pretty much got yourself like a Sugar Ray Leonard style of boxing and that sort of boxing, that sort of movement is hard to time. Again, it takes hours and hours and rounds and rounds of footwork and drilling and work in shadow boxing on the bag to make it so you can keep that pace up. Number three, that's gonna make it so that you get hit less coming in. Two great fighters who are good at this. Mike Tyson, Ricky Hatton. A lot of people diss on Ricky Hatton, but if you watch him, there is so much you can learn from Ricky Hatton. The reason why you can learn from Ricky Hatton is because Ricky Hatton did things in his fights that coaches teach fighters in the gym that they usually don't do in their fights. The coach is gonna teach you to move your head and step off. The coach is gonna teach you to fake and then slip and then go. A lot of coaches teach fighters things in the gym. They don't do them in their fights. If you look at Ricky Hatton, in his fights, he did a whole bunch of stuff. Fakes and step offs, doubling, tripling up on the same side, switch steps. I mean, he did so many things in his fights, so many tactics. Because Ricky Hatton was an aggressive fighter, he had to make sure he didn't get time coming in. Now, of course, yeah, against Mayweather and Pacquiao, he did, these are some of the best. But if you watch what he does, similar to what Tyson does, moving your head before you go, moving your head, making your head a moving target, along with fakes, lateral motion, and then you go, all of those three things are gonna make it harder to time you, harder to hit you coming in. If you are a taller fighter, the head movement might not apply so much, although it does. Look at guys like Paul Williams when he was fighting back in the day. Taller, lean fighter, lots of head movement. But it's the same thing. With the taller fighter, it's a lot of what you do before your combo to make sure the shorter fighter isn't able to time you and launch on you, but it's what you do after your combo. You, you cannot hang there and punch four or five times in a row. Your power output starts to go down, you become more readable, your head hasn't moved, it's in the same place. Your punches may be coming at the person, but your head is right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, you're gonna get hit. You have to move the head, you have to cover. It's like in basketball, three seconds in the key is all you get. You have to have the same mentality. When you go inside, you've got one second. You got one and a half seconds, boom, 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 boom. If after that one and a half seconds you haven't moved your head or you haven't covered or you haven't popped out, expect a counter. If you don't have defense built in, expect to get hit by that counter. So again, with the outside fighter, you're gonna work. You go in with your combo, you cover right away, or you have an exit plan to duck or to slip and get out, to move and get out. A great fighter to watch is Bernard Hopkins. You rarely see Bernard Hopkins throw more than two, three punches at a time because he's cagey. He builds the escape plan into his combo. Boom, boom, dip, boom, 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 dip. Especially watch uh, Hopkins against Kelly Pavlik. Boom, dip, boom, 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 dip, overhand, dip. The head movement and the evasiveness was all built into the offense. You don't see Hopkins hanging there with his head up the middle for too long because the counter is coming. In my opinion, they're having a fear of getting hit is healthy. It's healthy because it lets you know that there are things that you need to build into your boxing to avoid getting hit. There are some cases where acting on your fear will help you. If you are in a compromising situation where somebody's just trying to load up, tee off, 
you're in a gym where people aren't taking care of you, get out of that situation. But when it comes to sparring or your gym or your fights or you're visiting other gyms and when it comes to pulling the trigger and better performance, it means better conditioning and it means building things into your techniques that prevent you from getting hit. And I think that when you're getting hit less, it becomes less of a concern because you know you can deal with it. You know it's not really gonna be your prime issue. So for those of you, and it's a lot of people, most people who have a fear of getting hit, leave your comments below on ways that you've dealt with that or things that you've done to not necessarily get over it, but deal with it and improve your, your boxing or your kickboxing or your MMA or uh, any sort of uh, sport or martial art where your striking is involved. You know, leave a comment on some of the things that you've done to deal with this. As well, on my website, there's a sign-up form at the bottom of the page. I'm probably gonna move it later to the top of the page. The bottom of the page, sign up uh, for that sign-up form. Through that sign-up form, you're going to start getting a newsletter from me, but initially you get a 40-minute video that I made, a 40-minute video free that discusses some of the, the number one, some of the top reasons why I think People, fighters' progress is limited when they first join the boxing gym, especially in the early stages or especially if you've been in the gym for six months to a year and you haven't made that leap to sparring or you're still very much at the beginner stage of sparring and you're struggling. This is more of a conceptual based video so that you can analyze yourself and see what it is that you need to do to improve your level. There. Are a lot of people in the boxing gym, when they join, they get stuck at a certain level and have a hard time breaking through. So sign up, you're gonna get uh, an email with a link with this video, and that video is 40 minutes covering ways you can improve your boxing, especially if you're in the early stages. Now, if you are somebody who has already signed up for something that I've had in the past or purchased one of my products, you are already on this list. I have about 3,000 people on the list. So check your email, check your spam box. It might be there. Or you can always email me and I'll send it out to you. Um, but it's better if you go through the form because then you're gonna get the regular stuff after that. The newsletters that I have after that are gonna be uh, sparring and training and fight tips, short little tips with short videos, uh, some good quality stuff but in short form. Of course, on YouTube, I'll still have some of my longer videos, and then of course on my website, I have my thorough, in-depth instructional videos. So, go to my webpage, right at the bottom, sign up, check it out, and uh, watch that video. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.